Hello friends, this is Brian Cavanaugh here. I am the founder of Streamwise Solutions, Connected Living Made Easy. Today I am going to show you the new Sling TV app, new and improved I should say, Sling TV app on Fire TV specifically. Um, I am just using the Fire TV remote by the way to navigate around, uh, mainly up top with the circle button and the center select in the middle of that moving it over uh, from home to the right and then just hitting the center select button to open the Sling app. There is some integration in Fire TV that brings Sling and some of the uh, channels and such into uh, the Fire TV user interface under the live section as well. So it's kind of just personal preference but uh, Sling just going straight to the app, hitting the center select button, opening that is kind of what we're going to focus on today. Because uh, even once you access the Sling stuff from the live section of Fire TV, it actually takes you into the app. Keep in mind, there's kind of two sources for TV that we recommend. One is the free stuff off of an outdoor antenna, mainly local channels. And the second source is, uh, you know, anything you choose to pay for. There's a lot of free apps, obviously, but the second source of TV is streaming. Um, paid apps uh, like Philo or Sling TV and some others. Uh, depending on your situation and what your needs are, uh, give you a whole bunch of cable channels for, uh, you know, in this case, Sling has got sports and news and like, you know, 40 some channels for 35 bucks a month with a bunch of other add-ons as well. Um, you can see it dumped me into the home section here. If I move my cursor to the left, probably the most important thing to remember on here is you have kind of this main navigation bar. Now keep in mind, this is not the same as the main navigation bar that goes horizontally in Fire TV which is where we started, this is the main navigation bar within Sling itself. So I think the easiest place to kind of start when you first get it is if you hit down and get to the guide section here, you can see it's highlighted with the orange uh, line. Just hit the center select button on the uh, Fire TV remote. Again, I'm just using the circle button to go up and down, left and right, pretty simple stuff. Uh, it comes in and obviously I can tune into channels from here. You can see across the top, I have all kinds of different options here. I'm going to get to that in a second though. I'm just starting with, I think it defaults to all, but I actually went to alphabetical. So they actually did some pretty good upgrades in here, quite frankly. I think it's much, much easier to use than it was before. Uh, and obviously there's no contract, it's month to month, and it's still the least expensive service that has news and sports. So definitely a good thing. If I use the uh, down arrow on the remote, underneath, uh, you know, using the circle button to go down on the Fire TV remote. Um, you can see it gives me the option to uh, hit the, the three, uh, the, I call it the hamburger button basically to record. What I really want to show you first is kind of what I would suggest to start with. And that is basically coming into Sling and setting your favorites. So obviously I can tune into channels from here, but if I go down to like, let's say AMC, I can see what's on. I'm going to move one to the left, and that actually is a pretty cool option I'll show you in just a minute, but actually two to the left. And once it's highlighted in orange, if I hit the center select button again, I just added that to my favorites. And, you know, you can kind of see as you scroll down here, too, I have all kinds of channels that I'm getting. And pretty much I can pick and choose whatever my favorite channels are. So I can either go back to the top one by one, or what I usually like to do is right next to the home button, there's actually a back button. It's kind of like back in a web browser. It's a button that just takes you back one page in essence, as opposed to out of the app. So you still stay in the Sling app, but you just go back. So you can see I hit back and I went to the top. I've hit, hit the back button again. Now I'm over in the guide. So it's a pretty quick way to stay where you were, but just navigate around a little, little faster. Uh, as opposed to going one by one and surfing through all the content. Now that I've done this though, I don't necessarily need to go to the all or the A to Z anymore. Now I can just go to favorites and you can see it's a much quicker way to just get to all my favorite channels because at the end of the day, let's face it, like we only watch like what, five to 10 channels. Um, so what I was gonna show you before is if I go in here, yes, I can record. Yes, I can you know hit the center select and watch TV. But if you move one to the left and you actually highlight over the channels themselves, 
that's actually a pretty interesting thing because if I hit center select here on HGTV, it'll show me what's on now and it'll show me what's scheduled if I go down using the down button, but it also has a whole bunch of on demand. So I can quickly go down here and actually find, um, you know, whatever my, my favorite shows, hit OK or select on that. And then I can actually record this series or add it to my watch list. Keep in mind, uh, I kind of suggest recording pretty much everything because if it's just on demand, um, it's going to still have commercials. Whereas if you actually record the series, you can actually choose to, by the way, new episodes, new episodes, reruns, whatever. Um, it's going to allow you to skip commercials after it records. So keep in mind, there'll be a bunch of on-demand stuff that may have commercials in it initially. But after the first week or two, when it starts, you know, building up and recording stuff, they'll have a whole bunch of other options in there as well. So again, I'm just hitting the back button, which is left of the home button. And cruising back to kind of where I started. If I hit back once more, it takes me up to the top. You can see these other categories. These are the recent things that I've watched. Um, and then there's also sports which filters it obviously by sports, same thing with news. So it's the same content, same channels, just different ways to see it. There's the same thing for kids and whatever else. Um, I'm gonna hit the back button one more time and come out to the left in my vertical navigation. And the next thing I'm gonna show you is the DVR section. So I'm just going down on the circle and then hitting the center select to get the DVR. So DVR, you can see again up top, it kinda has the subcategories just like it did under the guide section. So recordings are just everything that I've recorded. So you can see all my recordings. You can actually move to the right and see what's scheduled to record, um, things like that. So it's pretty simple if I go back to recordings. If I want to uh, come into my recordings and play a show, you know, you just hit select on it and you're off and running. So I won't really necessarily go into a lot of these things and watching live TV is pretty simple like that too. So that's the recording section real briefly. Again, hitting the back button, moving out to the left. On demand is underneath the DVR. On demand, keep in mind, just like we were talking about before when I was going in from the guide to the specific channels directly, it's gonna have commercials, but it's a whole bunch of stuff that's just sitting out there waiting for you. Now, you can kind of see it divides it up into categories up top. There's everything. Watch list, you know, you can add stuff to your watch list if there's favorite shows or whatever movies, TV shows, you know, however you want to do it. So kind of up to you. And even within that, you can see they kind of have their featured stuff up top. And then if you go further down, you know, they actually even filter it more by different genres and such. Um, so anyway, that's the on demand section. Uh, I'm going to hit the back button again and then go back home. So home again has kind of the bigger stuff up top, whatever's trending right now. Uh, recommendations will obviously get better over time as you watch stuff and it also has your most watched channels in here which is pretty interesting and, and nice as well uh, you have to it's kind of there's a lot of different ways to get to the same type of content it just filters it different ways and also too, you know it's personal preference some people like the you know the more the Netflix tile based stuff like we're looking at here and some people like more of the uh, you know grid guide type of thing so uh, anyway I can tune into channels from here, which I won't bother doing because it's pretty straightforward. If I hit the back button and go out, the other thing I want to show you is search. So search is pretty straightforward. You can actually search for shows. Um, I'm just going to hit the center select button because I'm actually on the show keyboard up top here. And then you can just, uh, you know, st start typing in a, a show of whatever you're, whatever you're searching for. I'm totally making something up right now, so I have no idea what I'm searching for, but uh, look, we found Ozzy. That's kind of scary. Um, so anyway, search is pretty simple. You just literally have to use the circle and the center select button to kind of find things. You can see I actually had a recent search. You can actually search even for uh, channels. So like I did a search for like HDTV, for instance. And if I hit the center select, move to the right, hit the center select on that, it's actually the same thing I was in before where I can see what's on live, I can see what's coming up, I can see what's on demand with all the different shows. So again, two or three ways to get to the same thing. I would, when you initially get this, just spend some time, add your favorite 
um, channels to your favorites and then also add your you know favorite shows to your recordings and your watch list so that that way um, you don't necessarily have to watch TV the old school way which is sifting through 200 channels that you don't care about and kind of finding something you, you halfway like with this it's more of a what you want when you want uh, type of situation um, as far as watching TV um, so that's kind of it. I'm going to move one last time up to the settings up top here. And you can see all your account stuff is in here. Um, there's all even parental controls. So if there's anything else, there's also support in here too, by the way. Um, obviously, we're not a, a direct provider. You would want to contact Sling with any additional questions and what have you. You know, basically why StreamWise exists is obviously to save people's time and money and sanity and just make sure you're getting it done right the first time so um, you know we focus on three main things one is getting you the channels you want for as little money as possible with with no contracts so you're flexible to you know come and go as you please um, and then the last thing is just ease of use so it's one user interface one remote control so when I'm done here I'll hit the home button on the Amazon Fire remote and that actually takes me back home and uh, Again, now I'm on my main navigation bar, not the Sling one, and you can kind of see like I'm in Home and Find and Library, and I can come out to my apps over here on the right, which we also have uh, other videos on all this stuff, which I won't go into the details. And then the Live section for all like my free antenna channels, so it's all integrated in one user interface, one remote. I'm not changing inputs back and forth, so it's super simple. But anyway, that's how uh, you use the new Sling interface. Like I said, it's a a welcome upgrade for sure. It takes a little bit of getting used to the new stuff, but actually overall I think it's actually much, much better, much easier to use. Um, so thanks for tuning in today.